Never stop his time with the enjoy and my man, the blonde bombshell, the unicorn, the betting expert. That is, of course, John oh. Bucketsheimer. Buckets, how are you doing? Ian, I forgot you were in the studio today. I thought you were at home, which means I can normally sit through it because you can't hear any of the war cry, but damn near blasted my eardrums out there, but I'm still doing well. We're recording pretty early for me. I did manage to get up in time, but uh, I'm excited, baby. We got the leagues back finally. Oh, finally. Domestic action is back, Buckets. Oh. Fucking hell. The international break drove me absolutely crazy this time around for some stupid reason. Anyway, as you'll notice, I'm in the New York City studio surrounded by my Points Bet family. A huge shout out to Points Bet for everything they do for us. It is, of course, a Fanatics experience. Buckets, fucking hell, man. It's been awesome, and we got a hell of a show today because we're Premier League focused, but points bet have come up with some juicy lines for us to play around with this week. They absolutely have, and the diversity we have in our picks at points bet is just something that is unmatched. I think you'll all see what I mean when we get to my uh, bonkers bet later in the show, Ian. Anyway, listen, before we get into the show, there's something that's kind of been annoying me just a little bit just came up, it creeped up, you know, and a lot of loyal listeners out there dropped in the comments to let their anger known into our direction. And we sometimes have to pass on the blame to who was fucking responsible. Buckets, we of course had some becks over the midweek and there were a few mistakes on the graphics. And we don't mention his name too much, pretty much because Buckets doesn't know his fucking name. But producer Howard, he fucked up recently. Buckets. Most people out there don't know who producer Howard is. For everybody out there, this is, of course, producer Howard. Take a look. There he is. Um, very strong, <laughs> very aggressive person out there on YouTube. If you're watching, you will see. This is the um, the, the, the the profile, the <laughs> Tinder profile shot. This is the uh, Hollywood picture shot. And for everybody out there in the podcast format, that was producer Howard standing in front of the Hollywood sign, looking a lot like... A very famous actor who has a ton of muscles. Not Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was thinking of another actor. But at the same time, Howard fucked up buckets. And he has to take blame and responsibility for that. Well, you're damn right he has to take blame. But why is it when Howard messes up, we put up his picture. It's him shirtless flexing in front of the Hollywood sign looking amazing. And when I mess up, it's some cringy high school senior year homecoming type of shit here. And I think it's just a little bit inappropriate. But... Howard did mess up, and I want everybody on Twitter to make sure that Howard knows he messed up because that cannot be happening on a show as good as Stoppage Time. Yes, I agree with you there, Buckets. But at the same time, those are the only pictures we could find from you that were out there on social media. (laughs) Very awkward, very unusual pictures that we have to put out there for our loyal listeners. Very betting-heavy show. Welcome along, everybody, to episode 111 of Stoppage Time. Buckets, we made it to 111. We've still not been fired. We probably won't get fired after this one unless we have another shit Premier League match day. I am, of course, very excited about the show because this is extremely betting-heavy. So what I did do today buckets for eric gunnarsson this one's for you we got rid of all the chat shit we got rid of all the loyal listener comments we got rid of all the latest news all the transfer news any bullshit that comes into our show is gone and it is betting picks only today and that probably makes you happy as well buckets i I don't know i don't know i like the chit chat I like sitting here and hanging out with my best buddy, Ian. But if that's what we need to do for the loyal listeners, Ian, I'll respect that decision. Yeah, yeah. We, we like hanging out, obviously, with you, Bucket, sometimes as well. Um, usual Premier sometimes. League bets for everybody, but we also have a surprise bet at the end of the show. So, Frank, you might want to stick around for a little surprise package just for you. Let's not waste any time, Buckets. Let's get stuck into the Premier League. Let's give everybody the updated standings as to where we sit right now. Obviously, it was very disappointing going into match day eight buckets and here is where we stand right now uh betting expert of course the unicorn bucket timer was almost in profit once again on match day he's been profitable in five of the eight match days so far he sits at 20 19 and one he's up 4.3 units buckets that's pretty impressive from you i am down for the second match day once again this fucking season after my match day one sweep i find myself down three and 12 on the last three Premier League match days buckets and I'm currently sitting down 2.42 units uh, from stoppage
much time so far throughout this campaign, through eight match days. We are together as a team, Buckets, because I'm holding on to that right now <laughs> while I'm down. We're still up 1.88 units uh, from the show. Buckets, of course, is cleaning up in the midweek games, and we're doing very well on our Bundesliga pick, so everyone's making money. But this is where we want to see success. This is where we feel like we're giving people back, you know, those critics out there. We're giving them back the opportunity to see where, why, and how we're betting. So I'm looking for the rebound again this weekend. Buckets, are you ready for an awesome match day nine in the English Premier League? I think I'm ready. But yes, Ian, you do need to rebound. We might have a little bit of a naked cowboy situation on our hand here in a few months. Just throwing that out there. A few months. It's like fucking eight months left of the season, man. Hold your horses, <laughs> buddy. And listen, there's a lot of loyal listeners out there who would like to see me be naked as a cowboy on Times Square holding a guitar buckets. A lot more people out there, though, and I can guarantee you there's a lot more people inside this studio that would like to see John Buckets Eimer holding his guitar out there in Times Square with his big fluorescent white body fucking hell buckets <laughs> what i would do to see what color your chest hair is out there in times square what chest hair exactly all those muscles Aww. man you don't look like howard do you you really don't before we get into the picks let's have a look at howard one more time buckets what's the difference between howard and you when you look at the physique the, the specimen the human being i mean producer howard is pretty well built man I'm not gonna lie it's pretty well bold. We have different color hair, though. That's probably the biggest difference between us. Other than that, it seems pretty much identical, if I'm being honest. I'm fucking no way identical. <laughs> that is a specimen of a man right there. Producer Howard's still single, so for all you loyal listeners out there that may be interested in Producer Howard, um, maybe you know someone who would be interested in Producer Howard, drop in to Producer Rob's DMs and let him know you want to get in touch with Producer Howard. We'll make it happen. Awesome match day nine of the Premier League ahead. Let's get through the fixtures. Saturday, October 21st, it's Liverpool against Everton. It is the Merseyside Derby to kick us off with the early kickoff on Saturday. Bournemouth against Wolves, Brentford against Burnley, Manchester City against Brighton, Newcastle against Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest against Luton, Chelsea against Arsenal. It is the North London Derby, or the London Derby, whichever fucking Derby you want to call it. It's a Derby game. Then we've got Sheffield United against Manchester United. A Derby of the Uniteds, if you like. And then we go to Sunday. We have Aston Villa against West Ham, which is a cracking game. And then on Monday, we have Tottenham Hotspur against Fulham, another London Derby. As usual, buckets, 10 picks. Five from you, five from me. In the words of producer Rob, let's shut the fuck up and get on with the Premier League. Let's absolutely have it. This weekend, there is no Friday game buckets. It's all about the Saturday, Sunday, Mondays. And international break, thank fucking God, is over. Two best bets for this Premier League weekend from Saturday, Sunday, or Monday's game, if you choose. Then I also want a Premier League parlay. Then I also want a Premier League player best bet from you, Buckets. And I also want, which I hear is going to be a sexy bet, I want a bonkers bet from you, baby. But let's begin with the Premier League best bet number one. Ian, for my best bet number one, I want to preface by saying this. This is maybe one of my favorite bets we've ever had on the show here because I feel like I'm going crazy. Is today April 1st? Is Ashton Kutcher going to come out, you know, of the corner here of this back, dark, scary hallway and say, hey, I've been pranking you? Because I found an odd on points bet that it's just, it's it's crazy. And I feel like I'm missing something here. I'm looking at the matchup between Bournemouth and the Wolves here. And the bet is nice and simple. Super easy here. Wolves draw no bet. Maybe I'm missing something, but I can't figure it out. Because Bournemouth are just, they're just terrible. <laughs> they're awful. They have yet to win a single match this season. They've only scored five goals in their eight matches, and they've conceded 18. Meanwhile, the Wolves, sure, they're not great. They're sitting 14th on the table, but let's not forget that the Wolves are unbeaten in their last three matches, which included a big 1-1 draw against Aston Villa. It included a win over Manchester City and a draw over Luton Town. We're kind of ignoring that one. But this Wolves team hasn't lost in their last three match days. And the fact that I can get draw no bet with that safety net that I say all the time I love so much on the show, Ian, at plus odds, at plus 105 over on points bet, please tell me if I'm missing something because I'm trying not to put three or four units on this one. Bournemouth, no wins at home, two draws at home, two defeats at home, and Wolverhampton Wanderers, I know they've only had that one win away from home all season. They did have a draw, and they've lost two games on the road from the four games they've played away from home buckets. But fucking hell, I like that bet. And plus numbers, that is pretty sexy indeed. Not as sexy as producer Howard. Let's put the picture back up there for everybody who missed it earlier oh. on in the show. Uh, you just mentioned Aston Kutcher. Is this possible that we could see producer Howard... 
similar to Ashton Kutcher. Can we get it back up there again, please? Fucking come on, hurry up, let's go. But Ashton Kutcher, familiarities, what do you think? Well, I can't see the picture because they haven't put it back up there. So I, I don't remember, Ian. Producer I Howard, got nothing. Producer Howard said, you know what? Fuck this. It's not going back up. But what do you think? Ashton, <laughs> oh, I see Ashton now. Kutcher? Yeah, yeah. Ashton Kutcher, that's, right? That's, that's Ashton Kutcher. I've got my daughter in the room here. We need to take this picture down as quickly as possible. Somebody call the police on uh, producer Howard right there. Buckets, I love that bet. I think it's a great bet there. Obviously, you're always worried that Bournemouth eventually going to turn up and have this crazy win. But that's the Premier League, and that's the game we play. But you're right, especially after that performance against Manchester City from Wolves. How the fuck do you bet against them? That performance against Wolves caught me by surprise. Did it catch you by surprise? Yeah, it caught me by surprise, and it definitely caught Pep Guardiola by surprise, yeah. but he couldn't even name the guy who beat his squad. The Korean guy? The Korean guy, yeah. Korean guy, yeah. Juan! Ready for best bet number one, baby? Let's do it. All right, best bet number one from this Premier League weekend. I am excited because, of course, I've been on a very bad run, so let me warn everybody out there, fucking bet responsibly. You might want to tail buckets instead of me. But instead of that, let's get into it. Manchester City against Brighton. Manchester City on the money line, minus 250. Brighton, plus 550 on the money line for those who dare on points bet. My best bet for this game is the total goals to be over three and a half. It's currently sitting at minus 105 on points bet. Now, I know I'm on a bad run, but I don't fucking care, okay? I'm willing to jump back into the deep end with the Sharks and see if I can survive. Manchester City third in the league so far from the eight games played, 18 points so far, scored 17 goals, conceded six, and at home, they've been very good. They've scored eight goals, they've led in only one. The last two Premier League games for Manchester City... Lost both games. As Buckets just pointed out a moment ago, they lost 2-1 at Wolves, and then they lost 1-0 at Arsenal. So City are normally so dominant at home, and most recently, I have noticed, of course, it's not been the case. I'm feeling that City Revival is on the cards, and that power takeover is about to be set upon them at home. However, they're playing against a Brighton side. The league will be a priority. I want to point this out before I move to Brighton. City have a game against young boys burn in the Champions League coming up this week. In the Champions League, we would expect, okay, City are going to rest players. It's after the international break, rest players concentrate in the Champions League. But it's fucking young boys, okay? They're going to play their best team. They're going to play their best players. And I think they'll go with their strongest 11. Brighton, on the other hand, six in the league so far. Five wins from eight games. Super impressive. The Zerbi's doing a great job. Lost only the two games. Scored 21 fucking goals. I don't know if you can stop Brighton from scoring a goal. They've let in, and this is where I'm going for the over, 16 goals. So in case my math is incorrect, Buckets, please correct me if I'm wrong here. That's 37 goals in only eight games that they've been involved in, which is complete madness. I really, really want this one to hit. I'm pretty desperate for this one to hit. But Buckets, I want to warn everybody, bet responsibly. I think this has got a fucking chance. I want to give props to you, Ian, for going anywhere near Manchester City right now, because I looked at this game and I looked at the fact that City have lost three of their last four. And I said, no, no, I'm good. I'm not going to touch this one. I don't know how to bet this one. I don't know who's going to win this one, but I agree with you in the fact that I do think we see a lot of goals possibly from both sides in this one. It's the kind of match to where if this ended 2-2, 3-2, 2-3, 4-1, something crazy, that wouldn't shock me at all because City has to start winning again. And Brighton's Brighton. They're going to score. They don't, it doesn't matter who they play. They just attack, and it's fun to watch, Ian. See, that's the difference between a betting expert who's clearly leading the tracker right now, and the updated tracker showed us that you're winning, and of course, I'm going to have to perform as the naked cowboy in Times Square by losing, <laughs> but also someone who's inexperienced in betting as well. You're playing the safer play, and people are obviously seeing your mindset and what you're thinking is going into these big weekends, and I'm going for feeling. I'm going for what I believe and what my heart is telling me. So, we're different and we're sharing our experiences, but also I'm kind of fucking desperate. So what do I go for here? <laughs> I'm going to go for the hand that I feel is going to get hot, and that is Manchester City. But I just don't think you can stop Brighton from scoring goals. So I see a high score line, and there's more on that game later on, Buckets. Don't think I'm going in once at the deep end. Fuck no. I dive in twice. I get back out. Fuck the Sharks. I'm jumping back in again, Buckets. Let's get to your best bet number two for this Premier League weekend, match day night. Well, Ian, for my second best bet, this shows just how much I have changed and developed and evolved as a capper here, Ian, because my best bet number two is actually a parlay parte. That's right. I know we're not actually at the parlay parte yet, but I showed up to the parlay parte early with the same game parlay in the matchup between Aston Villa and West Ham. 
And I am tired, guys, of betting on unders. It never works out for me. And I'm glad that the universe punishes me for betting unders because we all know that's just not how I bet here. So I know that we're coming back from international break. So be careful because it could be a little weird here in these matches. But I'm looking at Aston Villa. I'm looking at West Ham. And I am looking at goals here. Both teams to score. And over two and a half goals is sitting at minus one, two, five on points bet. So a little bit of juice. But come on. We've watched these teams and we know how they play. West Ham have Mikel Antonio, which is really all they need to score goals, apparently. While Aston Villa have my boy Musa Diaby from the Bundesliga and also Ali Watkins, who is in tremendous, terrifying form here right now. There is no way I see this game ending 1-0, 1-1, anything even close to a low-scoring affair. This is a game that could have four or five goals, Ian. So I love the fact that I can get both teams to score and over two and a half at playable odds. Buckets is a great bet. Absolutely fantastic bet. And what a great number. Great find, good research, great information. That's why you're the fucking best at what you do. And I actually think that one could add over three and a half total goals in the game. So I'm looking at like a 2-2, maybe a 3-2 scoreline in that game, or maybe a 4-1, 4-2 kind of scoreline as well. I think we could see a bunch of goals there. There are two teams that are difficult to stop. I hope we don't get a boring return from international break because there is a bunch of international players there. Let's not forget that. Yep. But I hope we get a fiery affair and there's a lot of mistakes and a lot of goals and a lot of quality because both of these teams are playing well this year. And we all know how good Aston Villa are at home. We've talked about it previously on our shows. Unai Emery is a, a guy you back when you're coming into the big game. So I'm pretty excited this one. You know, listen, you mentioned there the under and the over. Did I make you feel bad when I was criticizing you for the under? Uh, you and all of Twitter made me feel bad last time I bet an under. So I'm staying a little bit away from it just for now. Just for now. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to my oh, co-host. Oh, you're kidding me. The unicorn, the blonde bombshell, John Bucket Timer. Because I've been absolutely fucking hammering him for taking the under, betting the under, choosing the under. Don't do it. And here we are. Don't do it. Best bet number two this weekend from the Premier League match day number nine. I'm going to the fucking derby. Liverpool against Everton. Liverpool on the money line, minus 300. Everton plus 650 on the money line on points bet. Good luck to those who dare. My best bet here is Liverpool... Money line plus under four and a half total goals in this game. I managed to get it to minus 125. It is way too much juice for my liking. Um, however, I am desperate, and that's why I'm going for this bet as well. Liverpool are fourth in the Premier League, just at one loss. Um, they have won five games so far this campaign. They have drawn two games so far this campaign. They scored a really impressive 18 goals so far this campaign and let in nine goals so far. At home, they've won all three games. Of course, at Anfield, that's where they make their money. That's where the fans are incredibly successful. Successful. Nine goals scored, two goals conceded, and the home games here, the results are 3-1 against Bournemouth, 3-0 against Villa, 3-1 against West Ham United. Big games, big performances, three goals. Not bad. All of them, of course, under four and a half total goals, and all of them wins. So I expect to see this bet have a big chance of hitting because I think this game is going to be very, very competitive. Everton right now, their Merseyside rival, 16th in the Premier League, two wins this season, five losses already in the campaign. Uh, one win, one draw, and one loss away from home from Everton Football Club. They've scored only five goals. They've conceded only seven goals. So the games are a bit cagey. I don't want anyone to forget here that this is a fucking derby game. These games are massively important to the supporters of Liverpool. And I'm talking about Evertonians or I'm talking about the Reds of Liverpool. You going to work on a Monday, you want to be able to boast. Doesn't matter what side of Merseyside you're on, blue or red. This is a big game. So I really believe that this game will be kind of a cagey game. Everton are playing better. Sean Dyche is doing better. It's going to make it difficult for Liverpool to be free-flowing and scoring goals. But I do think Liverpool will be too strong. And I do think Liverpool will score goals and win this game. The under four and a half... I just feel like it's going to happen unless Liverpool really turn it on. Everton get the first goal, then it could be interesting. But under four and a half, I think, hits for sure. Now I need the parlay to hit as well. Buckets, this is my best bet number two. What's your thoughts? I like it, but that is all I'm going to say about it because I am doing something with this matchup later on in my picks, Ian. Oh, Buckets, I've got something else from that game as well. I'm intrigued if we're on the same one, John Buckets, I'm or... All right, let's get to the Premier League parlay party. I know you've already been to the dance floor, but let's go back. Let's go back for seconds here, Ian, and I'm just going to jump right into the game that you just talked about because my parlay party does include that matchup between Liverpool and Everton. 
And as I mentioned, I haven't hit a parlay in a couple weeks, so we're done with unders. We're just going to bet on goals here, Ian. Now, I don't need four and a half, but what I do need is two goals here. My parlay is going to be Spurs versus Fulham and Liverpool versus Everton. Spurs over one and a half team total and Liverpool over one and a half team total. So as long as both of these teams score at least two goals, I do not care what happens. I didn't think I cared who won, but now I care that Liverpool wins so I can support my boy Ian here. But basically, I'm just keeping this one nice, sweet, plus 100 odds. Go ahead and see, it to, or see you at the pay window. This one shouldn't be that difficult. Spurs have scored two or more goals in four of their last five. The only time they didn't was that bizarre game that killed both of our bets last match day where they won 1-0 after a red card. And Liverpool have now hit over one and a half team total in 10 matches straight across all competitions, Ian. This frankly seems too good to be at plus 100. So I've got no problem playing that, maybe even for a couple units here. I'm not going to mention any more buckets because you gave out great information and I'm not disputing it. I think it's a great bet. I really do think it's a great bet and I'll, I will tail it. But I have something a little later on in the show for you that I'd like your information on. This may be a little crazy that has something to do with your bets. <laughs> but, you know, when things are not going well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you have a tendency to go back... When you're in your betting space and you're on a bad run, things are not going well for you. Do you go back to what's worked for you before? Do you go back to like a routine or something? I definitely have my certain plays and my certain teams that I like to go back to all the time, especially when I'm struggling a bit. Guess where I'm going. Something you've done before on the show for the party? Is it a Man United Arsenal money line type of thing? The superstar bet is fucking oh, back, baby. You best go. believe it. All right, let's get into my Premier League parlay for this weekend. Match day nine of the Premier League. Manchester City against Brighton. I'm going back to the big one. City minus 250 on the money line. Brighton plus 550 on the money line on points bet. My parlay for this Premier League match day is Manchester City money line added together with over one and a half team total goals added together with Erling Haaland. Anytime goal scorer gets you to minus 125. I understand it's a little bit juicy, but once again, I am desperate. And when you are desperate, you go back to what works. It is, of course, the superstar bet. I am going back to what has worked for me from fucking show number one. Manchester City, third. Won six games, lost two games, three clean sheets, 2.12 average goals per game. City score goals, City win fucking games. Over one and a half team total goals is hitting at about a 62% clip right now, and I fully expect them to claim that against Brighton, of all people who love to score fucking goals. Erling Haaland, welcome back to the party. Scored a couple of goals for Norway most recently in the international break. But we needed a pop-up again for Manchester City. Eight goals scored so far this Premier League campaign. He's leading the way in the Premier League. We've got four goals at home, four goals away from home. The last time he did score a goal in the Premier League was September 23rd, which, if I'm not mistaken, Buckets, was about a month ago against Nottingham Forest, also at home. Ooh. You'll remember that game because that was where we saw the assault. Do you remember the assault? From Rodri, yeah. Rodri should have been put in prison for that one. The choking of the neck that is commonly seen in the UFC. Rodri lost his head. Erling Haaland scored in that game. So I'm believing that this bet will hit. I believe in it. It's something that's really close to my heart. And uh, when you get desperate, sometimes you go back to what's worked for you before. Superstar parlay bet buckets. It's fucking back. What do you think? It's a scary bet. I will say that just because of Holland's EPL form here. But I agree with you that the international break probably came at the perfect time for Holland to get a little bit of confidence back and remember, wait, I'm Erling Holland. Why am I not scoring every single game, multiple goals every single game? I think that break is exactly what the doctor ordered for Holland. So I'm going to tail the superstar bet. Thanks. Not only because it's a superstar bet, but because Holland should be back in form here. How fucking crazy is this though, Buckets, right? How crazy mm -hmm. is this? You can have a money line. An over one and a half team total and an anytime goal scorer and you're still not in plus numbers? What the fuck? Uh, Man City, baby. Fucking That's what it is. Unbelievable. Erling Haaland back with a hat trick this weekend. Mark my words, he's coming back. At least two goals this weekend. Buckets, it is time to get into the player best bet this weekend. I'm excited to see where you're going with this one. Well, for my player prop, player bet, player, whatever we're calling it, I'm going to what I assume is a derby, Ian, because I feel like we have four London derbies every single week. But I'm on the match between Tottenham Hotspurs and Fulham, because I am never going to fade Tottenham Hotspurs under Big Ange in these matchups. And you know why this match is so special, Ian? This is a revenge match for the Spurs here. Tottenham Hotspurs 
were knocked out of the EFL Cup in the second round by Fulham back in August. Since then, Spurs are now top of the English Premier League table, the best team in the Prem beating out teams like Arsenal and City for the moment. And while I do think that eventually we see some regression, we're not going to see it against a Fulham team that is just, frankly, they're just not, what is it, not up to snuff? Is that the term? <laughs> Something like that. They're not good enough to beat the Spurs here. And one of the big reasons the Spurs are so dominant and they're winning so much and they're scoring so much is because of a guy that we've bet on and actually lost on before, Hyung Min Sun. However, Hyung Min Sun, he's back. He is scoring goals. He has a third of the team's total goals with six scored in eight matches here. And I don't want to say he owes us for losing that bet last time, but he's in good goal scoring form. And I do think that he's going to see a lot of play time against Fulham. And I think Spurs are going to see three or four goals against Fulham as well. So odds are one of those is going to come from our boy here. I'm taking him on the anytime goal score, which is currently sitting at minus 110. It's also important to point out that Sun is the kind of guy that can create chances from nothing. He only has an expected goals this season of 3.2, and he's scored almost double that. So I think it's time for him to score again here, Ian. Did you double check to see what happened on the international duty with Hyung Min Son? Oh, no, I didn't. Is he hurt? <laughs> no, he's not hurt, but he didn't play, and that's intriguing to me. Um, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good because it looks like he's rested over this international break. I haven't double-checked because so I don't know if he's played any minutes or if he's traveled much. But that's what I like to do when it goes to my player bet as well. So I always like to check, especially after these international games, where the status is on these players. So be careful. Yeah, go ahead. So he he, he did not get hurt, but he did play as an off-the-bench shove against Vietnam in which he scored in the 61st minute in a friendly. But it looks like he did rest the majority of that. I'm sure he flew first class as well, you know. Hyung Min Sun Airlines. He fucking flew private probably across the world. <laughs> Uh, love the bet. Listen, uh, again, I go back to it. I am on something a little crazy on Tottenham later on, which I want your opinion on, but I do love it. I mean, I think Tottenham win that fucking game. I do think there will be goals in that game, um, but I, I, you know, later on, I'm going to share something with you and I want your opinion. So I'm not going to say any more right. with that. Is that okay? That's fine. That's fine. All right, let's get to my player. Best bet for this Premier League weekend, match day nine in the Premier League. I can't fucking wait for this one. This is a great bet here. I'm going back to that Liverpool-Everton derby game. Again, you see it. I'm going for the big games, and I'm going to continue to go for the big games. I feel like I can read this game just that little bit more. Liverpool on the money line, minus 300. Everton plus 650 on the money line on points bet. My player best bet for this weekend is Mohamed Salah to have two plus shots on target. Finally, I'm back in plus numbers, plus 105 on points bet. Club legend, we all know that. Scoring a derby seems about right for him this weekend because of course that's what Mo Salah does he scores in the big games this season eight Premier League games five Premier League goals four Premier League assists 26 shots he has taken this campaign 12 shots on target that's working at about a 46 percent accuracy rate from shots to shots on target all time in the Premier League he's on a mission Mo Salah probably going to go down in history will absolutely be in the Hall of Fame he has 239 Premier League games 144 Premier League goals he has taken 852 Premier League shots is absolutely insane. And if you take 852 shots, I mean, wow. To get 144 goals shows you how desperate he wants to score goals. And in big games, he wants to turn up. Against Everton, I dived into the deep side. Against Everton, he's played nine games so far. He has actually scored five goals against Everton, but only the four wins from Mohamed Salah in the five games, the nine games. Four draws as well, just the uh, one defeat. But I've got a feeling this game is going to be a closer game than we all expect. I do expect to see Salah play from the start after playing for Egypt. He has been on international duty as well. He went and traveled away, played for Egypt, but he played on Monday. So that gives him some time. It's the early kickoff on Saturday morning, let's not forget here. So him playing on Monday gives him plenty of time to get back, to rest, to recuperate. So I expect him to be in the starting 11. If he's in the starting 11, this bet goes. If he's not in the starting 11, you might want to hold off on this one because two plus shots on target is something you need to have time on the field for. But Mo Salah, I wouldn't put it past him scoring one or two goals in this game. But the two shots or three shots on target is worth a look, Buckets. So I'll just advise on what you already pointed out in your point there, that wait until lineups just to be safe here, because for whatever reason, if he's not rested, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll start. I think he'll get the majority of the match, if not all 90 minutes. But just be careful, because it is coming off of international break. But if he starts, at least two shots on target, maybe three or four here, Ian. Yeah, I like that one, Buckets. All right, it is time. It is oh. the time that everybody's been waiting for. I want everybody to strap on their seatbelts, because Buckets gave me a heads up. He said, Ian, I got something crazy for you. It's bonkers time. Let's go. So, Ian, I'm going back. I got to stop picking people I can't pronounce, but give me a second here. I'm going back to the matchup between Aston Villa and West Ham, and I'm going for a very bizarre market here. 
And this is a bet I found specifically on points bet. So make sure, as always, that you're using their site and you're using that sports book here. But Ian, I think you're going to appreciate this bet as a former defender yourself. I'm taking for Aston Villa, Lucas Digny to be shown a card at plus 350. Now, Lucas has the most cards for Aston Villa already this season with four cards shown in his first eight matches. But it's important when you're betting on card-specific players to look at who they're in charge of defending. Lucas Digny plays in the left-back position for Aston Villa, which means against West Ham, he is in charge of stopping players like Mikel Antonio and Jared Bowen on the front right for West Ham. These are the best attackers that West Ham have, and they also are the two players with the most pace that West Ham possessed here. So he's in charge of dealing with the best talent that West Ham has to offer. I think that Mikel Antonio or Jared Bowen will score a goal here, but if they're not going to score, it's because Lucas is going to have to get scrappy, he's going to have to get chippy, and he's probably going to have to foul them to prevent them from getting past him here, Ian. I'd love your insight here as a former defender, but I love the fact that I can get the most foul-heavy guy on this team to get a, a yellow card here at plus 350 over on points bet. Lucas Digne. Digne. Damn it. Lucas Digne. Digne yeah. I think he's French. Um, mm. Love the bet. Love the bet. And especially with a game like this when we're expecting goals, right? We're looking for the over to hit here. We think both teams to score. We think it'll be a fiery affair because both of these teams are pushing for a European place. They want to be in the top five. Fuck the top seven or eight. They want to be top five. They all want either Europa League or potentially if they can, which will be almost a miracle for both of these clubs to get near those Champions League spots. So this is a fucking battle. I agree with you. I think we see many cards here. I was actually looking at this game at one point for the over on cards because I think it's going to be a fiery, fiery game. So absolutely love that bet. And yes, I do believe it. Obviously being a left back myself uh, in big games, sometimes went out to pick a yellow card up just for the fun of it. I did. <laughs> I fucking did, man. You, did, you just, just, you were a little bored. And you said, "I know what I'll do," and just went and took a stab at someone. Playing at home, sometimes you need to get your team going, right? If your team's not playing well or they're struggling to get motivated, fucking just smash someone, pick up a yellow card, and then <laughs> boom, motivation's gone. Fans are into it, especially where I played. Right, I played at St. Pauli, where people just cheered you for fucking smashing people. They wanted to see heart and passion. And yeah, I used to just sometimes pick up a yellow card, and sometimes I pick up a yellow card on purpose. My daughter Madison's in the studio today. Tell you a quick story, right? She was born on a Saturday. That day, we were supposed to be playing against Rottweiss Essen. It was a Regionalliga game. It was a third division game in Germany. And um, big game. Big fucking game. But anyway, on the due day, I fucking noticed it was falling on a Saturday when we had this massive game against Essen. And I had a decision to make. I'm like, all right, do I, do I run the risk of missing the birth? Or do I pick up my fifth yellow card? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I did? Guess you picked up that fifth yellow card? You're fucking damn right. And guess what happened? She was born minutes before kickoff on the Saturday. Good yellow card to pick up right there. And even told the gaffer, it's like, gaffer, next week, birthday, what do you think? Fucking get the yellow card, buddy. Let's, we'll, we'll be fine without you. Was, was, it, was it like a strategic yellow, or did you just go out, knock someone in the back of the head, and then walk off? I can't remember if I smite. No, I definitely wouldn't hit anyone in the head. But I don't try to injure anybody. <laughs> but I would probably annoy the referee or do something that you know that's not going to be irritational or uh, injure anyone at all. Just argumentative. Yeah, yeah, I get it. The only time I would ever go hard into a tackle is when I was really in a big game. That's when I would go hard into a tackle. But sometimes you can tackle people without hurting them, and it was just, you know, it was, it was fun. It was fun. So picked up that yellow, was there for the birth, and here she is. Fucking hell. 17 years later, celebrating our show stoppage time with us. Pardon my language, Matty. I do apologize for my fucking language. <laughs> uh, let's get to the WTF bet for this weekend. It is a plus 300 and over bet only. And I'm excited to share this one with you. I'm turning my attention to the game between Tottenham Hotspur and Fulham. Tottenham on the money line, minus 210. Fulham on the money line, plus 500 on points bet. Be brave for everybody out there. This game is taking place on Monday, so you're going to have to wait for this game. My WTF bet for this weekend is first half total goals to be under 0.5. Yes, that's right. I am once again going back Whoa. to the under. It is currently sitting at plus 300 on points bet. This is completely a WTF bet because of the way Spurs have been playing. And yes, I know they've scored 18 goals in only eight fucking games. And yes, I know Ange Postacoglu loves to attack. I know. I understand. I respect. And that's why the odds are plus 300. Spurs so far this season, eight Premier League games, six wins, two draws, zero losses. At home, three games, six goals scored, three wins, zero losses. First half goal 
There's only been one of them from Tottenham Hotspur. And that's why I'm going for this fucking bet. They've been second half team, second half goal scorers, late game goal scorers, stoppage time goal scorers. And in a derby game against a Fulham side who have also played eight Premier League games and have won three Premier League games, they've drawn two, they've lost three. They've only scored eight goals, Fulham themselves. They've let in seven away goals from the four away games that they've played so far. It is obviously a 0-0 scoreline that I'm shooting for here. Stating the fucking obvious for everybody out there who doesn't understand at halftime. But I did notice this, Buckets. On the points bet betting app, which is absolutely wonderful, we love to go on there and place our wagers, 0-0 halftime score was plus 270. And that's why I'm taking a different avenue. Under 0.5 total goals in the first half was plus 300. I managed to find a way, Buckets, to get to our number, plus 300. Long shot, please bet responsibly, but Buckets, creativity. It, you get points for creativity, absolutely. And finding a way to get a plus 300 angle, even when it looked like it wasn't possible yeah. there on the app here, Ian. But I got to ask you this here. Out of respect for you as a co-host and as a friend and as a brother to me, are you still feeling a little bit of that disappointment when Spurs failed to score in the first half Fuck last yeah. week? I'm annoyed. And that's fuel- is that fueling this bet, though? No. I'm going for okay. this one simply down to the fact that I know Tottenham are a second-half team, especially at home. One Very goal fair. one goal they've scored at home in the first half this season tells me that they're a second-half team. And in stoppage time, you'll notice like there's money to be made on Tottenham scoring goals in the final 15 minutes of games. Because stoppage time, in case we didn't fucking already know, is ridiculous in the Premier League. There's sometimes 15 minutes of stoppage time. So there's money to be made on stoppage time in the last 15 minutes placing a bet. I'm going to say this right now, Buckets. If this is 0-0 or 1-1 going into the 75th minute, Go check out the odds of what it will be for a Tottenham money line. Tell you now, it'll pump right up there. It will. It'll be absolutely crazy. It's a derby game. Fulham, obviously, there will be tired legs from international break. This game has taken place on Monday, so they'll have an extended period of rest until that game. But I just feel like this is going to be a closer game than we're all predicting. And I can see a nil-nil halftime. I think there'll be a winner, and I think Tottenham will score two. So I like your bet. I think Tottenham will get two in the second half. But I just think that the first half, Fulham's job will be, hey, let's go there, get to halftime, nil-nil, and then see if we can do something in the second half. That's where I'm going. That's a great point here, because if you're Fulham, you're probably really, really happy getting a single point off of Spurs. If they could play for a nil-nil draw full-time, that's not a bad result at all. So I like that you made that point. I do think there is a winner here. I think the second half does explode here, Ian. But I like that more than I thought I would ever like a nil-nil kind of bet here. So I'll be tailing. But it is the WTF bet for a reason, so always bet responsibly here. Plus 300, man. Fucking crazy. I couldn't believe I got uh, that. It was plus 270 for nil-nil result, correct result. And to get this angle with better odds, this, sometimes this is what you have to do, right? I mean, speaking from your own experience, if you just are patient and you can search around, you can find lines or bets that work differently on different ways. Well, absolutely. And think of all the different ways you could play that. Nil-nil correct score. Under, you know, 0.5 first half, first half draw, Spurs team total under 0.5. There's a hundred ways you could make this bet, but only one way that you could make that bet to hit the plus 300 threshold that we have here. Yeah. So creativity is important, but you got to put the time in to find all the different ways to bet something like this. So first half draw was plus 160 on points bet for everybody out there who wants to jump on that. No, no correct score was plus 270. And then I got plus 300 for total goals first half draw. That's how you do it. That's how you find the value, though. That's how you do it. I love it, man. I'm learning so much from you. Appreciate your buckets. Uh, That does it for our Premier League picks. But don't forget, everybody, the Bundesliga is all over on episode 110 of our show, Stoppage Time. We've got all Bundesliga games, predictions uh, from the match day eight games that are coming up this weekend. We go through every single game. Buckets gives his predictions on the score lines. I do as well. We also give a scorer out there for everybody who's interested in goal scorers as well. Um, Obviously, people are loving what's happening in the Bundesliga. It's the league we love the most, and that's why we cover. It. Um, so, of course, the Premier League is, is always going to be our number one here at points, Ben. It always will be. But at the same time, we love to share our passion for the Bundesliga because there's goals galore everywhere across there. There's money to be made over there. Me and Buckets are very successful with our betting picks over there. And people out there who have enjoyed watching the show so far are making money with us. But Buckets, 111 episodes are now in the book. I've got a little something for one of our loyal listeners. You ready? Well, depends. Which listener? Frank. Freaky Frank. Let's do it. Freaky fucking Frank. Frank, this is just for you and all of our Major League Soccer bettors out there, back by popular demand. Yes, it is. Hot Coco with a Major League Soccer play on MLS Decision Day. Take a listen. 
Hi boys, Hot Coco here with your MLS pick. For decision day, the game I'm looking at is FC Cincinnati versus Atlanta United. And I'm gonna do a same game parlay, BTTS and Cincinnati Moneyline. It's currently sitting at plus 170 on points bet. The reason why I like this game so much is because the last time they played each other, Cincinnati beat Atlanta two to one in Atlanta. And on top of that, the last home game Cincinnati had, they lost to New York Red Bulls after conceding a red card. And after such a great season, they're not going to want anything except a win in front of their home fans. I do, however, think Atlanta will bring it. They currently have the second most goals in MLS with 64 goals. I just don't think they'll bring it as much as Cincinnati will. Cincinnati can afford to play their best squad because they have a longer break before their playoff games. And on top of that, Acosta's in running for Golden Boot. He's only three goals away, so I think he'll definitely bring it. Anyways, I hope you have a great weekend and that you all enjoyed this bet. Thanks. God, I love that woman, Bucket. God, I love that woman. <laughs> she is my anytime goal scorer, man. No. Oh. <laughs> What'd you think of the yeah, bet? Do I, I gotta ask you, what was the bet again? It was Cincinnati, it was, and the over. Okay, so I think it's great. Uh, both teams um, have scored, not over. Sorry. I mean, it's it's a hot cocoa pick. You just tail it. I don't think she's missed one yet on the show, right? No, she's so even if you don't watch 100%, MLS, yeah, hundred percent. Even if you don't watch MLS, you don't know who Cincinnati or Atlanta are. You don't care. You take the bet. You tail hot cocoa because she hasn't missed. That simple. In case you couldn't tell, I was admiring hot cocoa there, so I didn't listen to a word she said. I was just like, <laughs> God damn, I'm so lucky to be married to that woman. Oh my God. Frank, that was just for you and all of our Major League Soccer bettors out there. It is Decision Day Major League Soccer, so please bet responsibly out there, everybody. These results are fucking crazy. I will be going to the NYCFC game this weekend. They play Chicago Buckets. NYCFC are the lowest team in the Eastern Conference that can make it into the playoffs. They need a win, and they also need a fucking miracle. But a miracle is what will happen this weekend, hopefully, for my boys in blue. Buckets, that was an awesome show. Thank you so much for the great research and all the hard work you do. We appreciate you. A uh, little word of advice for our loyal listeners out there because we gave a lot of picks out here. We've obviously had a very controversial week and a little bit of an update as well. We did see the seven-month ban for Fagioli for betting irresponsibly yep. and betting um, from Tonali on his own games. AC Milan games just came out yesterday. It's been a really controversial week for the betting space, but at least we're bringing some positivity. Yeah, we're doing the best we can. Sorry, I was so bummed to hear that he bet on his own team too because as soon as you bet on your own club, that suspension goes from here to here and understandably so yeah i don't think or i think he said he didn't play in any of the games he bet on if i'm not mistaken but again it doesn't matter because you're betting on a club that you know with your friends and brothers on the team and you you just can't be doing that man it it bums me out but i mean it, it happens unfortunately it's almost like insider information though right if you're actually inside the club and you're placing bets you know everything's going on what's happening mentality and all that you have a you have a, a better chance of winning i yeah. would say but at the same time it's just it's sad it's sad. This is clearly an addiction, and that's why you do it, right? You're betting on your own team because you're addicted. Oh, to absolutely. You have to be addicted because, again, we talked about this a little bit on show 110. It's not like they don't have – well, I know Fagioli's situation is tough, but these guys have a bunch of money. It's not like, yeah. oh, you know, they need the money. They have to hit their bets to do X, Y, and Z. They're betting because it's an addiction, and it's something that – it's you know it's more common in our industry than I'd definitely like to it to be. Well, that's why we produced this show right now. The Premier League is back, domestic football is back, and we wanted to bring some positivity. And that's why I wanted to focus only on the betting buckets today. It was great to be positive, to bring the energy, to bring the bets. And I'll tell you now, this right here, this finger, this one, that's called a fucking rebound for everybody out there. Rebound, everybody! It's coming your way this weekend. I cannot wait. Episode 111 is books. Uh, thank you to everybody for your support. We appreciate you. Enjoy the weekend. We'll be back again, of course, next week with a full recap of everything on Monday. We'll talk about what happened in the Bundesliga. We'll also discuss what happened with our Premier League picks. Uh, don't forget points, but I've got you covered across the board. And stoppage time will be with you all the way. Join us on social media. We are available on all cross social media platforms. We're doing a great job. We're trying to promote as much as we possibly can. Also, stoppage time is available on Instagram, everybody. Don't forget there. We don't post as much. Producer Ed, why the fuck do we not produce on fucking stoppage time Instagram. We should be doing more on the Instagram. Ah, he's waving his hands up here. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> we'll try to do more and be more active on the Instagram. Um, of course, we want to be across the social media board. But things are changing here drastically. Things are going to go to 120 mile an hour very quickly. But we will still be here, Buckets, producing our picks for this weekend. Everybody have a great weekend. Make sure you have um, an awesome time sharing this show. Make sure you share the show with love and um, subscribe and like and 
comment. Because we got some great comments on that last show. I didn't have time to share today. And I didn't want to share it today because I wanted it to be heavy betting focused. But I will be sharing on Monday some of the awesome comments we got from episode 110 and episode 111. To everybody out there, please make sure you're betting responsibly. But just like I'm going to do this weekend with my Premier League rebound, I'm going to absolutely fucking have it.